that I made to produce these little bowls from. Now, it's surprisingly easy and there are a whole load of videos out there on making moulds, particularly for bowls already, but as people were asking for it, I thought, let's go for it. First thing you're gonna need is a bowl. Now this one is, is an interesting shape. It's gonna be a bit tricky when it comes to demolding things from it, I think, because of this high side and curve, but let's give it a try. Next thing we're gonna need is something to put it down on. Now some people are using sticky stuff, um, predominantly transfer tape or the back of sheets of sticky vinyl or tape or anything like that for sticking yeah, for, for actually placing their moulds around down onto. Um, now, I'm not going to do that simply because I wanted to show you an alternative if you haven't got anything like that to use. What I have got, however, is a proper mould making kit. This housing is from Let's Resin, and basically you make the shape you want like this. Now, of course, what you can do is just hunt around, see if you can find yourself a big plastic tub or something that you don't mind destroying, and use that to make your mould in. I make an awful lot of things in, paper cups, um, yoghurt pots, all sorts of things. In fact, my frog moulds at the moment I'm making in these uh, little cupcake housings, the <laughs> jacquard. So, obviously I've got my little bowl in there because it's kind of being like my template. And you just keep putting these bits together until you get the right shape and size. The next job then is to make sure it's stuck down to the base. And I've got a, a little way of doing that. Because obviously you don't want your, your silicon leaking out from underneath it. Right. That's going to be... See, this is where you end up using too much silicon because that's really going to end up being too big, isn't it? You see, you can end up with all this void here. So save all your silicon offcuts because you can actually stuff things in it. You can also, uh, and I keep meaning to do this, so this might be an opportunity, make some hollow rods to put in. Okay, suddenly this video has an extra purpose. Might mean it'll take longer to do, but never mind. So you can see how this works. You can make it up to whatever size you like. I've got two sets, so because you, you can actually put one on top of the other as well if you seal them properly. So if you're doing a deep mould, you can go up and up and up and up. You know, just by putting another, another layer on top like that. But love this little kit. I just wish, the, wish these sections, you could get like half size ones as well. Let's Resin, if anybody from Let's Resin is watching, um, can we have that? Can we have little half size pieces? Right, so we've assembled our frame. Now what I'm going to do is make up a tiny little bit of silicon and we're going to make a rim to go around this. And what we're going to mix it in is a little plastic pot and that is because silicon sticks to silicon so we don't really want silicon in a silicon pot. Only need a little bit. There we go, that's pretty well mixed now. And all I'm going to do is put a seal of it round the edge of here. So all we're trying to do this is to stop it coming out from under the sides. Now, this does come with some tape, but I find it the tape is a devil to get off afterwards. It's just like double-sided sticky tape. And I've used various glues. Again, it's a devil to get off afterwards, whereas silicon just peels off. So why not use silicon to seal it? Yeah, obviously I'm going to have to leave this for a couple of hours for the silicon to stick down and dry. But, yeah, it works. And it, it just peels off afterwards. Dead easy. So there we are. And I'll just make sure I've definitely gone all the way around. Like so. A little bit of pressure on it, make sure it's gone down okay. And then we're going to leave it. So I'll be back for the next stage in a little bowl. Right then, now that's been stuck for a couple of hours. And so I'm now positioning the bowl. Now, in terms of these rods to go around the sides, it's occurred to me, these little bottles I've got, and I've got two different sizes, I can put them into that. 
so that will create voids and therefore using less silicon now i'm going to make i'm going to put a layer a complete layer in first then when that's cured i'm going to sit these little bottles on top and then fill up the rest of the mold and that way uh i will also be able to turn the mold over when it's all cured and everything and make solid resin ones of these so that if i do this again i've got some ready to to use see could do one for in the middle of the bowl as well but i'll think about that later <laughs> but i just wanted to get a layer in first so that we can sit those little bottles in doesn't need to be a thick layer so i'm just mixing up a little bit now I've actually filled the little bottles with water as well because I don't want them to float up. Now what I'm doing is I'm blocking the corners in a little bit Oop. with some little bottles of water. Water so it will sink. I mean if I was, if I thought about this for longer I'm sure I could go around and do more. I have spoken to Letterazin and suggested maybe a half size a pack of you know say four or something half size ones of these um i think they're thinking on it uh in the meantime i might as i've got a spare set i might i might sacrifice one and cut it up and make my own parts i don't know i'm going to mix up some silicon what they've done is they've sent me some of their smaller bottles as you can see i've used a bit of both of these already this morning for another project it's a part a and a part b this is a nice little kit i'll put you the link to this little kit there's also like a a beginner's kit type setup i believe if i remember rightly i'll put you the link for that as well um and obviously they do big bottles too but i've got these these are really handy actually because they're a nice size to handle um okay i'm gonna mix that up and i'll be back with you shortly there's a big one there look that's now that's that's got my homemade um sparkling in it look but that has saved quite a lot of silicon you don't need to do it in layers, really. I mean, because I was wanting to put bungs in, then I did need layers because I wanted a layer underneath them. Um, but you can do it all in one go. It doesn't change the curing time, I find. This silicon is my go-to silicon. I've tried so many, as I've said before. The ones that have got a colour in are awesome too. You can get a lot of silicons like that, and they tend to be cheaper. Um, obviously, you then can't use them with ultraviolet curing resin because you it's uh, you can't see through <laughs> the light won't be able to get through but um if you are just doing regular molds like this probably you could just use those now i tend to use rather than my usual stirry stick i tend to use uh, something this is just a cheap plastic knife you know from the party section in supermarkets or pound shops or whatever you call them dollar stores don't you in america i think you call them pound shops or you know your bargain shops it's a shame they're on about banning these, what they call single-use plastics in the UK. I think any firm who manufactures things like these plastic party cups and um, knives and forks and things really needs to latch onto the craft community because um, let's face it, we all use them. And if they can argue that their materials, that their tools are actually made for the crafting community, suddenly they're no longer single-use, are they? Because let's face it, that pot, you've just seen me clean it and use it again. I just pulled the silicon out. This knife, I will do the same. I won't bother wiping it. Silicon just pulls off. So this pot will probably get used 30, 40 times and the rest until it gets so bad that I can't use it. And if it cracks or something, then that, I'll just keep using it. I was just going to say, do make sure you get right into the corners like this. Get right into the corners of your pot. Really make sure you've stirred it in well. Some people get another pot and pour it back and forth between the two pots even. Um, the only time I've ever had problems with getting silicon to cure, and the same with resin, is when I've totally goofed and not stirred it up properly. And there's a little patch that isn't properly mixed. And it's kind of a hard one to retrieve. If it's right in the middle and you can chuck another chuck another layer over it you can sometimes get away with it but um the real answer is make sure you stir it really thoroughly so i'm yes yeah, so i'm getting right down into those corners there so if you can see there we go right down into the corners sorry it's a bit of an extreme close-up today isn't it probably need to back this off a little bit <laughs> it's because i'm used to stirring in smaller pots and things for you to see so cleaning my little 
knife off I'm plunking it down onto one of my wet wipes and right let's fill up this middle first now I'm pouring from a bit of a height pour as high, look right ooh, pour as high as you can actually I'm just going up to the height that is restricted by where my camera is and I'm going to let it overflow into the bottom because I know this isn't going to float my, the little other ones with the water in I'm not sure how stable they're going to be I don't know what don't want them falling over so that's why I'm thinking I will do it in two layers because I'll let this layer hold them in first and then I'll pop the other layer in. Because the other thing is once you've got yourself a really nice mould it's quite easy to replicate it. Um, I wouldn't with this mould because there's still going to be too much wasted silicon but um, when I get one that I'm entirely happy with and there's very little wasted silicon I'll take a mould I'll take a casting off the entire thing with um, probably just what bits of leftover resin uh, over a period of time until I've ended up with a complete negative of it and then I've got a thing I can make I can keep replicating the moulds from. I hope that all that rambling made sense I know I know what I'm talking about sometimes. <laughs> right uh, would you all let me know if you're finding this video helpful? I was asked to do more on mould making. I have done a couple of videos featuring it. Um, but everybody seemed intrigued on the little bowl that I'd done. So that, that's why, by popular request, I'm making this video. Um, my next mould making, I've got a little soap dish um, that I want to replicate. So I'm going to be taking moulds off that. If you'd like me to show that too. You know, I'm doing these things anyway. So if you want me to film them while I'm doing it, then... Uh, yeah absolutely let me know not a problem at all so I'll look I'll have a check on the comments once this video goes live and see if you wanted me to to do that right then I'm gonna have a little clear up and uh, we're gonna leave that there's a little bit of depth now around the bottom of these little bottles so I'm gonna let that sort of at least semi set right it's been about an hour and it is starting to solidify it's gripped these little bottles in quite nicely just occurred to me i could have sprayed those with some um release spray that might have helped anyway this is the i promised i'd show you sorry i'm struggling for space here because that bottle's sticking up so i'm zooming in a bit close i promised i'd show you the little set as it comes that's the part a and part b that's all that's in that set but um, if you've already got your jugs and pots and everything, that's all you need. And as it says here, non-toxic, no odour, bubble free, easy mixing, translucent, clear, versatile use. I can vouch for all of that. And you mix it by weight. But as you can see, as you know, I don't do weight. That involves maths. Uh, as you can see, the two bottles are the exact same size. Therefore, whether you mix by weight or volume, it's going to work. So I mix by volume. Anyway, I'm going to mix up another load, chuck it in, and we'll take it from there. The other thing you'll find with these little bottles is it has these little stoppers on the top. Do use them, because it stops the silicon climbing out of your bottle. Has anybody ever had that happen? Where things climb out of your bottle? Resin does it as well, I find. So that's what I do. I twist the bottle as I, as I uh, finish pouring. Give the top a little white round and then put the lid on, like so. And you don't need to worry about gloves. I find I get in more of a mess with gloves, to be honest, than without when I'm doing silicon. Um, but that's up to you. It's As, it, as I said, it's non-toxic. Okay, so just finishing mixing now. Um, little trick I found quite useful. I don't know how much difference it makes. Sorry about any background noise. My neighbour's got a craft workshop too, and his crafts are a lot noisier than mine. Um, <laughs> yes, another little trick. I found if I turn the pot as I stir like this, and I'm going against the side. Sorry, I'm off camera, but I hope you can see. Um, that way I'm making sure I'm getting right into those corners, and then yeah, finally have a good go round the edges like that. So I've been stirring probably for... Possibly, probably five minutes. I didn't time it. I just keep stirring. Um, and there we go. Just going to pour it in. Again, might as well pour it into the middle first. Why not? Because that looks nice, doesn't it? You can watch it cascading over. <laughs> not that anybody else is going to see that, other than you guys and me. But never mind. As you can see, it's going to need a lot more. This does. 
this uses a surprisingly large amount of silicon despite the fact that I've done this little trick to try and block some of it off and this is why it's worth keeping your scrap bits of silicon old moulds that don't work anymore that sort of thing just to stuff in it and pad it out um, to save yourself some silicon I think by the time I've finished with this this will have cost me if it wasn't for the fact that that's resin this I've been so kind to send me the silicon this time normally until <laughs> until this happened that they suddenly started sending me stuff which is awesome thank you guys um this would have cost me about probably about 30 pounds to make this this mold so don't think of it as a cheap way of saving you know a way of saving money oh it was a bit of from last time stuck in the bottom i'm gonna lob that in as well see bloopy bit yeah don't think of it as a way of saving money on your molds it isn't it's a way of making molds if you can't find what you want or you've got something particular that you want to replicate you know um but please don't think of it as a cheap exercise you know a cheap option if you're making really tiny molds and they're just for you to use yeah if, but if you're making them commercially trust me anybody who's doing that would need a much much cheaper supply of silicon and be much better at saving you know uh, from excess use than me once you buy cheap have got all hollow backs haven't they so there's a lot less silicon used there um that's not easy to do unless you're doing it on a commercial scale where that you know you can make the outer mold for the inner mold if you get my drift that's going to need a little bit more so i'm just going to make up a bit more chuck it in and then we'll be back in a few hours to um, to take it out and have a look at what the mold's like and i'll probably chuck some resin into the mold and uh, we'll give it a go for its first run Okay, now these might be a bit difficult to get out because of their shapes, but let's try the centre one first because it's the biggest. Really should have sprayed these first, shouldn't I, with some mould release. That would have made it a lot easier. Having said that, they're nice smooth bottles. They should just come out. I'm just thinking if I can get this guy out first, that should free everything else. Let's get that off the bottom as well. There we are. So we've now got a nice hole in the middle. Ta -da. <laughs> Gonna take the rest of these clips off, pop them back in my box. I'm gonna get rid of this now as well, can't I? There we go. Yeah, these can go back in my little toolbox that I keep my little mold making kit in. I'm a bit obsessed with little toolboxes. Just two cute little tiny crafty ones. Right, let's see what we can do here then. Now I find the easiest way to start getting this loose is to just do that a bit. Do that a bit. There we are. And then it all just starts to come away. And we can separate these. Give them a little wipe over. Now can you see? No spillage. That is just, that is that layer I put around the bottom. Let it cure a little while. And job done. You've also then got no worries about gaps like you would if you use the tape that they send you with the kit and um, whether a glue will stick or whether it'll react with the silicon or any any of that malarkey there's no worries about any of that so a little bit of silicon does it every time for me and then you can just of course pull it away or get your scissors let's do that quick go around with the scissors just get all that loose off and I do tend to keep this all in a little pot so that next time I'm making a mold I know there's not much but there's a little bit of waste that I can just use up to do a bit of you know infilling and saving a bit of silicon right now let's get these little bottles out Oh, missed a bit <laughs> the empty ones should be the easiest, shouldn't they? So let's free them up a bit and pop them out. Da, 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 da. Here he comes. A bit fiddly, but yeah, it's okay. So that, I've saved that much silicon. <laughs> Anybody who's making these to post out, you're saving a bit of weight as well, aren't you? Granted, only a bit. You could slice the corners off. You could do all sorts. You could certainly put a lot more bits like this in if you really wanted to. Now, this could be tricky because, as you can see, there's the, there's the rim of the bowl. We knew this might be awkward. Part of the reason I wanted a hole in the middle because 
the base is so much smaller. So let's get this opened out first. And it looks like I'm going to need to go around with a craft knife. It looks like it's loosening okay though. I could have left the craft knife bit till afterwards. I just think I'm going to get a neater, much neater edge if I do it now. You can see that's going quite neatly round there. And if you've got a rotary blade, this might be even easier, but as it's a simple shape, just a craft knife will do the job. Right, now, if we can get this out of here easy enough, then of course that tells us we're going to be able to get out whatever we cast in it out okay. Nice soft rubber. I would say I think this hole in the middle has helped a lot because that's given it a lot more give. It would have been nicer if I could have made a bigger hole, but that was the biggest pot because it's a funny shaped bowl. That's the biggest pot I could get to go in. <laughs> right, here we go. Let's get this little perisher out if we can. It's not going to be an easy one, I know. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, it's going to work, isn't it? It's just a bit of a faff. But you can see how lovely and soft this rubber is. There we go. Here it comes. And it looks like it's nice and shiny in there. Um, who's up for chucking some resin in and seeing what it's like? I think I want to make a purple sparkly one because it can go on the windowsill in my craft room. Right, back shortly, going to mix some resin up. Okay, all right, I'm going to do purple, as I said. I'm using the deep pour resin. It's called Deep Cast and it's an Apex resin. I'll put your links for all the stuff down below, of course. Don't forget, I've got discount codes for Let's Resin, where the silicon came from, and for the Apex resins as well, from just for you online. So do take advantage of those. Now, what I'm going to be doing, first of all, is putting some in a separate pot, I think. Do I put some in a separate pot? Yeah, no. <laughs> Look, you can tell I'm making this up as I go along again, can't you? I've been whisking this like crazy for ages. Deep pour resins degas really fast. You can see, despite the way I stir, so, so very, very fast. That's okay not many bubbles yeah what I wanted to do was drop some glitter down to go into the top edge and look at that glitter this is called mystic Meg and it's from jam pot glitters I just want it to go into the top rim basically so actually I'm taking advantage of the fact that these glitters the glitter sinks now what I'm going to do to back that I'm going to do the next layer just a little drop of lavender and that's from deck that's a I don't, know, I don't know what this brand is it's deco rom um color look at that Isn't that gorgeous <laughs> so i'm going to wash that glitter down with that hopefully that's going to push it down some i might encourage it a little bit with my stick i'm going to end up with a bit in the bottom anyway aren't i that doesn't matter but there's only the slightest bit of colour in that look and I haven't even mixed it too thoroughly just popped it in okay then for the last bit we're going to put quite a bit more of the colour bear in mind with liquid colours for your resin you can't really put more than 10% of it as colour because it just will inhibit your colour your resin from curing if you can hear vehicles outside, that's my other half. Just got home from whatever he's doing this week. Not sure what job he's working on. Right, so that didn't take very much. That was um, in total 80 millilitres of resin. Just trying to get the bubbles out of the corners. And because it's um, the deep pause is a one to, one to two, so I have yeah I have mixed it up a little bit too much. I should know in future probably sixty would have done. Now there we go. 
Now, being a deep pour resin, that's going to sort itself out. So, as usual, the rest of that resin, I shall pop it into something, and I'm thinking, probably a random heart. Well, here we are. You wanted a video on making moulds to make little bowls, and we, we have done so. As you can see, it's, uh, it's come out well. It was a bit of a devil to get out of the mould. Um, and it has got a few bubbles in it so next time I would spray around with some either some alcohol or silicon release spray or something have a little poke in around there with my stirring stick before I fill it right up to the top just to try and release any final bubbles that are in there um, because they can get trapped down the sides but as it happens that works rather well with the glitter effect anyway so and the different shades of purple have gone into like little cloudy patches the glitter sank where I wanted it to quite pleased with that got me a little bowl <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video you know what to do if you'd hit the likes the like button for me you know give it a thumbs up that would be great um also the buttons to subscribe and for notifications when i release new videos are down there you know where they are also my membership scheme is open so if you'd like to join and become a member to support me help my channel out and also get some thank you perks the button for that is down here as well Look forward to seeing you for the next video, folks. Bye.